Hi friends, welcome to Chess Lessons. Today my topic of discussion is lung collapse or atelectasis. Collapse is defined as airlessness due to absorption or displacement of air from the alveoli resulting in volume loss. How is it uh, developed? Collapse or a telectase of the lung parenchyma develop either by obstruction of airway or by compression of lung by air or fluid in the pleural cavity. It can also be due to failure of the alveolar to inflate due to surfactant loss. It may involve an entire lung, lobe or segment depending upon the site of obstruction. There are four types of collapse. First and foremost is obstructive or resorptive collapse due to obstruction of a bronchus or its branches. Main causes are tumors, foreign body and mucus plaques. Second type is the compressive or passive collapse, also known as relaxation collapse due to compression of the lung by increased pressure in the pleural cavity caused by pleural effusion or pneumothorax. Adhesive collapse or microatlaxis, third type, which is due to surfactant loss in conditions like ARDS or hyaline membrane disease. Fourth one is the psychiatrization collapse. This is loss of lung volume due to fibrosis of various causes. What are the radiological signs? Radiological signs of collapse can be divided into direct signs and indirect signs. Direct signs include an increase in density of the alveoli. Uh, in, involved lobe due to airlessness, displacement of the fissures and crowding of pulmonary vessels due to volume loss. Indirect signs include elevation of the ipsilateral hemidiaphragm, crowding of the ipsilateral ribs, shift of mediastinum towards the side of atelectasis, compensatory hyperinflation of normal lobes and hyalar displacement towards the collapse. Shifting granuloma sign refers to a shift in the location of a parenchymal lesion visible on prior films that may be seen in the presence of atelectasis. When a calcified granuloma is present in a lung and a significant parenchymal collapse occurs, this shift towards the hilum and this is called shifting granuloma sign. Collapse of the right upper lobe shows findings of increased density in the upper medial aspect of the right hemithorax, elevation of superior bowing of the horizontal fissure, loss of normal right medial cardiomediastinal border, elevation of the right hilum, rotation of the bronchus intermedius making it a little horizontal, hyperinflation of the right medial and lower lobe and right extraphrenic peak sign. <coughs> this is the x-ray of a right upper lobe collapse where you can see the bowing of the minor fissure, elevation of the right hilum and the juxtaphrenic sign that is tending of the right dome of diaphragm apart from a solid shadow in the right upper zone. So another x-ray picture of a right upper lobe collapse where you can see the horizontal shape of the intermediate bronchus on the right side. What is juxtaphrenic peak sign or cutan sign? Juxtaphrenic peak sign refers to the peak or tendered appearance of a hemidiaphragm which can occur in the setting of lobar collapse. It's commonly seen in collapse of the left or right upper lobe. This is the picture showing chestaphrenic peak sign. You can see the tending of the right hemidiaphragm because of the collapse of right upper lobe. Golden S sign is also described in right upper lobe collapse. Usually if there is a hilar mass which obstructs the right upper lobe bronchus to produce right upper lobe collapse, the inferior portion of the minor fissure is seen bulging and the superior portion of the minor fissure is seen bowed upwards. This is a picture showing a golden S sign where you can see the bulging of the inferior portion of the minor fissure and as it goes upwards it is bowing upwards and a dense shadow is seen in the superior portion of the right upper zone. 
Left upper lobe collapse is slightly different when compared to right upper lobe collapse. It collapses anteriorly, becomes a thin sheet of tissue opposed to the anterior chest wall and appears as hazy opacity extending out from the left hilum and fading out inferiorly. Part of the normal cardiomediastinal contour is obstructed. Uh, the hyper expanded superior segment of the left lower lobe insinuates itself between the left upper lobe and the superior mediastinum, resulting in a sickle shaped lucency medially, which is called Lufthi cell sign. You can see the x ray in left upper lobe collapse where the shadow is very insignificant. This is the shadow showing the right upper lobe collapse. And most important point the sickle shaped lucency lateral to the aortic knuckle, which is the Lufthi cell sign. Middle lobe collapse on the right side uh, shows a right mid or lower zone airspace of pacification, normal horizontal fissure is no longer visible, there is obscuration of the right heart border and an increased opacity adjacent to the right heart border. This is a picture showing the right middle lobe collapse. You can see the triangular shaped collapse of the middle lobe with the medial border of the heart in the lower part is obscured and you can see the crowding of vessels within the collapsed segment. This is a CT coronal view where you can clearly see the triangular shadow due to the middle lobe collapse. Middle lobe size is reduced and you become a small triangular shadow obscuring the uh, right cardiac border. Right lower lobe collapse shows a triangular opacity to the right lower zone with the apex pointing towards the right hilum. Obscuration of the medial aspect of the dome of right hemidiaphragm, inferior displays of the right hilum, descending interlobar pulmonary artery is not visible, and there is inferior displacement of the horizontal fissure. In the lateral view, there is a triangular opacity in the lower posterior part of the chest. Right hemidiaphragm is obscured posteriorly, and the lower thoracic vertebra appears denser than normal. Oblique fissure is displaced posteriorly inferiorly but may be visible with the severe collapse. Inferior displacement of the right hilum also may be seen. The picture showing the right lower lobe collapse. You can see a dense shadow along the right cardiac border, which is triangular and the apex is towards the hilum. And the medial portion of the right diaphragm is obscured. The lateral view can see that there is a density over the lower thoracic vertebra. This is another picture where you can clearly see the right lower lobe collapse. This is the triangular shadow with apex towards the hilum and the diaphragmatic condo is obscured. Left lower lobe collapse shows a triangular opacity in the posterior mediastinal aspect of the left lung. And this is called retrocardiac sail sign. An edge of the collapsed lung may create a double cardiac condom. There will be inferior displacement of the left hilum and flattening of the left heart border, which is known as flat vessel. Uh, left hemidiaphragm border is obscured. Inferior displacement of the optic fissure may be seen, and descending interlobar pulmonary artery will not be visible. In the lateral view, again a triangular opacity in the lower posterior chest, left hemidiaphragm is obscured, vertebra appears denser than normal, oblique fissure is displaced posterior inferiorly, and inferior displacement of the left hilum may be seen. You can see the x ray in left lower col lobe collapse. This is the shadow in the posterior aspect behind the heart. And there is a double line. This is a cardiac border, this is a collapse border. This is the double condor sign. And lateral view shows density over the lower thoracic vertebra. And there are different signs we can note in left lower lobe collapse. One is a retrocardiac sales and a triangular opacity, the post aspect of the lung, just behind the heart. Double cardiac condor sign, edge of the collapsed lung may create an additional border medial to the left heart border. And flat waist sign, flattening of the left heart border. 
in total lung collapse the whole lung is collapsed due to obstruction in the main bronchus left here it is the left main bronchus you can see here dense opacity with mediastinal shift towards the left side and the right lung is herniating towards the left and you can see here cut off sign in the left main bronchus this is the area where there is an obstruction which produces complete collapse of the left lung and left diaphragm is elevated this is another picture showing the same uh, phenomenon in right left uh, left lung collapse trachea shifted mediastinal shifted herniation of the left lung and elevation of the left hemidiaphragm this is the picture of a passive collapse or relaxation collapse where you can see a pneumothorax on the left side with collapsed lung this is the collapsed lung with the collapse lung border seen here and this is otherwise called visceral pleural line the pneumothorax compresses the lung collapsing it towards the hilum adhesive atelectasis occurs from surfactant uh, deficiency depending on the etiology this deficiency may either be diffused throughout the lung or localized seen mainly in ards and in hilum membrane disease Chest X-ray features usually develop 12 to 24 hours after initial lung insult as a result of proteinaceous interstitial edema. Within one week, alveolar pulmonary edema occurs due to type 1 pneumocyte damage. There will be bilateral air space opacity. Volume loss may not be apparent in this case. This is a case of ARDS where you can see the bilateral diffuse shadowing in the lung. Volume loss may not be apparent. Last one is the cicatrization lactasis, which occurs as a result of scarring or fibros that reduces the lung expansion. Common etiologies include chronic granulomatous disease like tuberculosis, necrotizing pneumonia, and radiation fibrosis. This is the picture of a cicatrization collapse or fibrosis where the whole left lung is fibrosed. Trachea and mediastinum shifted. The right lung is herniated towards the left side. and there is slight elevation of the right dome of diaphragm thank you very much